After years of research and development, MLB Network premiered StatCast. This revolutionary new technology allows scouts and fans alike to track gameplay and players on a whole new level, all in real time. MLB Advanced Media's Chief Technology Officer Joseph Inzarello joins us now to discuss how StatCast could change the way we watch baseball. I mean, from any demo you've seen of this, I mean, when you sat down, I said this is the greatest thing and the worst thing that's ever happened to baseball at the same time. It completely changes how you perceive the game. I mean, there's so much more information that's happening there that we really weren't paying attention to until we had this view. A lot of what we're trying to do is dimensionalize what coaches and players know intuitively. One of the things I think about sports that we always look about is accessibility. Can somebody sit down in front of their tablet or computer or television and really just understand what's going on? We think StatCast is really showing the just incredible athleticism. I think sometimes people don't realize how big a baseball field is. When an outfielder makes a run and he's going 21 miles an hour for 150 feet, it's pretty incredible athleticism. And he's leaping at just the right second to reach over the fence and steal back a home run. Yeah, I, I think the, the thing that's so amazing to me is some of the reaction times that you see. Uh, we had a play last year in the World Series that we were using the StatCast technology for, and Joe Panic a, a, had a reaction time that was a negative number. So when you actually calculate it, the ball was four feet in front of the plate when he started to move. And it's almost precognitive. It's like spider <laughs> sense uh, at some of these athletes, the way they can read a play and react to it, even before it's actually transpired. And so part of this infrastructure is what every park now has. Yes. Explain this. Radars, lasers, Doppler. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a combination of uh, radar that was actually originally designed for missile tracking. And that predominantly picks up the ball. So it makes sense. It's a fast-moving object. And, and this radar is really, really accurate. It can actually see the rotation of the seams of the ball. So it, it can actually view rotation. <laughs> uh, and then we combine that with machine vision. It's a stereoscopic machine vision where... It's basically like two eyeballs that are looking at the field and they can see the depth and the height of all the players running around. Uh, we put all that stuff together in real time and that gives us a play narrative that allows you to calculate things like reaction time, like route efficiency. So what happens to baseball when reaction time and route efficiency start getting into the way that players are judged? We've already had pretty good offensive numbers. How do you produce runs? Uh, pretty good pitching numbers. You know, How do you get a player out? But when you really get down into defense, it's all been very subjective. This guy looks like a good fielder, tends to not make a lot of errors. He should probably have a golden glove. But when you really start to get into, like, this is what the play was. This is his average reaction time. This is his average, you know, velocity throw from third base to first base. You really start to get into a system where you can rank these guys. And leaderboards are one of the things that we rolled out around the All-Star game, where you could actually see some of these statistics. It's already getting there. Uh, exit velocity uh, apparently is one of the things that the players, from a hitting standpoint, are now talking smack to each other about. You know, whose is the highest? What so, is exit velocity? So exit velocity is when the ball is pitched to the batter and the batter makes contact, actually seeing the ball go out from the bat, like at what speed. So it's not uncommon to see an exit velocity 110, 117 miles an hour leaving the bat. And what that really does is it gives you an idea of power. So the combination of exit velocity and some of the other ball characteristics allows us to calculate something we call flat travel, or what would happen if that ball didn't hit something. So previously on a home run especially, you would wind up in a situation where it was very difficult to compare ballpark to ballpark because it might hit the stand, it might hit the upper deck. You don't really know. But we now do know. We can actually say, like, definitively, this is how far that ball would have gone. So it no longer matters what park you hit it in. You can now approximate power. How does this change a scout's job? Right? So to, how, how does this say, are they now going to be thinking about the defensive characteristics of a player before they say, well, this is the kind of person we need to pull onto this team? Well, I mean, they always have. They always tried to evaluate that, but a lot of it was more subjective. And when you get into things like clinics or combines, you would see skills you know, contests, how accurate, how far. But the truth is that athletes perform different in a real-world situation than they you know, perform when they're just sort of doing a drill. Mm -hmm. As this technology gets less expensive and sort of democratizes its way down into the lower levels, you know, college, you know, minor league baseball college, you, you know, down into the amateur, at some point, little league, no doubt, which will happen over time, I think that what you are going to see is that data set is going to get factored in. I think that what we'll find out is that you know, there will be a diamond in the rough, some inefficiency in the market where somebody didn't look like they were right. you know, performing super well that will actually show up in the data as being somebody who is actually executing at a very high level. With 
StatCast working its way in through TVs, in through different kinds of services, how do you make sure that people still go to the park? We're blessed in the fact that we have an incredible in-ballpark experience. The game is certainly the anchor part of that, but it's the concessions, it's the you know inning breaks, it's the games in the concourse. I mean, there's tons of stuff. It's really a, a great family entertainment side of it. So that part of it's not going to be something we're going to digitize, right? That's still going to be something you have to experience in person. But I also think that we're looking very heavily, and we've spent a lot of time at baseball thinking about things like wireless connectivity in ballparks and you know our app, ballpark app, that allows you to have a digital workflow, uh, you know, from your ticketing to how you buy concessions to loyalty, also has information. So you know you can imagine when you start thinking about wearables and things like that, you see a pitch that was thrown, you're like, wow, that was a great pitch, and you look over how at your Apple that? Watch. Yeah. And you know what the pitch location and the speed is. Yeah. And so I think that you know, there's this notion of uh, we are a digital society right now. You know, it's unlikely that most of us are ever really truly unplugged. So the question is, how do you make that technology appropriate for the context? And in the ballpark, it's certainly not big, in-your-face, super screen you know, all right. the time because you are experiencing it live. But that doesn't mean this technology may not actually work its way into the conversation. All right. Joe Anzarello from Major League Baseball. Thanks so much for joining us. Great. Thank you.